What is going on? Welcome back to my channel. Alex here and today I'm going to be talking about a topic that a lot of people ask me and that is how do you become a private pilot? If you're new to my channel and you like topics that are related to aviation, marketing or finance, please consider subscribing. I'm going to be adding some timestamps below in the description so that way you can just skip the video to the subjects that you are most interested in when it comes to how you become a pilot. In today's video I'm going to be covering the eligibility requirements to become a private pilot, how to find a flight school, what to buy or what type of equipment you need before you start your flight training, what to expect during training, how many hours you need to become a private pilot and of course the cost of becoming a private pilot. Let me start by covering some basic eligibility requirements. In order to apply for a private pilot certificate, you will need to be at least 17 and also you need to speak, write and understand the English language. If you are 16, you can at least apply for a student pilot certificate and you will be allowed to solo an airplane at that age. If you meet these requirements, we're ready to go to the next step. Before you invest any money or time looking for a flight school or a flight instructor, I recommend that you take a medical test. For the most part, if you don't have any serious medical conditions and you're not taking like hard medication, you should be able to get a medical certificate. I'll provide a link below and you can find a local AME, which stands for Aviation Medical Examiner, that would be able to give you a medical certificate. Before you set up an appointment with the AME, you will need to fill out a form in medexpress.fa.gov. I'll put that link below. Once you fill out the form, you will get this number that you will present to the medical examiner and is going to cost you about $130. With your medical certificate in hand, you can start looking for a flight school. There's two types of flight schools. You have part 61 and part 141. Some flight schools offer both. The main difference is that 61 is more lenient. They will work with your schedule. So if you already have a job and you have a busy schedule, then I would recommend that you find a part 61 flight school or at least the flight schools that offer that type of training. If you're someone that wants to go into the airlines and you wanna do it fast, then I would recommend a 141 school. They're more structured and usually you will earn your certificates a lot faster because they have a structured training. Me personally, I train under part 61 because I didn't truly have the money to put up front or anything like that. That's another benefit of going part 61 is that you can pay as you go. And usually 141, they will require you like an initial deposit or something like that. So me personally, at that time, I just didn't have the money. So that's the route I took. And honestly, it is a lot cheaper when you go 61. I will also provide a link below where you can find a local part 141 school. And also another easy way to find flight schools will be just Google flight schools near me. Once you have a list of all the flight schools that are around your area, I would recommend that you go to every single one of them. Usually a lot of flight schools offer discovery flights and they're, they range anywhere from 150 bucks to about $200. And it's kind of like an introductory flight and it gives you the chance to meet the staff and possibly your instructor. And that way you can kind of feel it. You know, if you like them, you can go with them and just, you don't want to marry with the first flight school. Once you select the flight school that you're going to start your training with, even though it's not required, I recommend that you start studying for your private pilot notch test. It will be even better if you can take the test before you even start your training. First of all, it's going to save you money because you're going to start flight training knowing something. And second of all, in my opinion, the instructor is going to take you a lot more serious because you already came to him with the test results, which you need at least 70% or higher. I'm actually going to put a link above on how you can study for this knowledge test. In that video, I'm going to cover what type of software I recommend and how to structure your studying so you can pass this test in about 50, well, in about 20 days. Now let's talk about what type of equipment you should buy before you start your training. First of all, I recommend that you get your own headset. There's different types of headsets. You, the cheaper one is like, they range around $150, and then you can go as fancy as Bose, which they're like $1,000. So me personally, when I started my flight training, 
I went with a cheaper version, which is 150. I'll actually provide a link to all the equipment that I recommend. Also, another great item that you should take to your first lesson is going to be a kneeboard. In this kneeboard, you will be able to take some notes. Down below, I'll also put all the books that I personally recommend. Let's talk about what to expect when you start your flight training. Every flight school, every instructor is different, but usually the private pilot training is divided in two parts. And that is going to be the solo stage and the cross country stage. On the solo stage, the instructor is going to help you get to the point where you can fly this airplane by yourself. Once that stage is complete, you will enter the cross country phase. Again, each instructor, each flight school do things differently, but this is kind of like usual and in this cross-country stage what you're going to learn is how to navigate and how to go from one airport to another airport during this time you will have to fly at least for 40 hours that's the fa minimum requirement but usually you will end up earning your private pilot somewhere between 65 to 70 hours that's kind of like the average that i've seen you will need to have 10 hours of solo time which means that you're flying the airplane by yourself and from those 10 hours five hours need to be cross country which means that you're flying an airplane from point a to point b and that leg is more than 50 nautical miles within those five hours of cross country there's going to be one specific cross country that you will need to fly at least 150 nautical miles and you will have to stop at least in three airports you will need three hours of instrument training which means the instructor is going to put this view limiting devices and you will learn how to fly the airplane by only looking at the instruments. This is my favorite, three hours of nighttime. During that time, you will go to an airport that is 100 nautical miles away from your home airport, and you will need to do 10 takeoffs and landings to a full stop at night. Once you meet those requirements, you will need at least three hours of flight training and preparation for the practical test. Oh, and before I forget, you will also need at least three takeoffs and landings in an airport that has a control tower. Once you meet all the aeronautical experience required by the federal regulations, you will be able to schedule an appointment with a DPE or designated pilot examiner. And if everything goes well on that day, that's the day you'll be able to call yourself a pilot. How much does it cost to become a private pilot? Well, when I did my training, it used to be a lot cheaper, but that was like five years ago. You should expect to spend anywhere from 13 to $15,000. And trust me, that price is just going to keep going up every year. So there's no better time to start than now. Also, there's a huge pilot shortage. So if you're trying to become an airline pilot, it's definitely a great time to start your training. Hopefully in two years or so, everything will be back to normal and airlines will start hiring again. I really hope this video has helped you understand what the process looks like to become a private pilot. If you liked it, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one.